Together, we're making a healthier, moist and delicious almond orange cake with an orange cream cheese frosting. The cake is made gluten-free and nutrient-dense with almond flour and is naturally sweetened with orange juice and cane sugar. The light and fluffy cream cheese frosting is made with powdered cane sugar and fresh orange zest. Then I'm showing you the easiest way to frost and decorate this stunning layered orange cake with toasted almonds. To give it that fresh orange flavor, we're gonna begin by zesting two oranges. So I'm just gonna run it across my zester and then I'll be careful not to go too deep into the peel because that's where it becomes more bitter. And two oranges will give you about three to four tablespoons of orange zest. Next, I'm gonna cut one of the oranges in half and simply juice it using a little bit of elbow grease. And one medium sized orange will give us between about a fourth a cup and a third a cup of fresh orange juice. And then I'm gonna save my second orange so I can peel it and use it to decorate our cake later. To make our orange cake batter, we're gonna start by adding our wet ingredients, which includes five eggs, one cup of cane sugar, a fourth a cup of oil, and my favorite is light olive oil, a fourth a cup of our freshly squeezed orange juice, two tablespoons or about two thirds of our orange zest, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and a fourth teaspoon of almond extract. And then I'm just gonna take my whisk and mix it until it's well combined. And I love seeing those little flecks of orange zest and the smell is absolutely incredible. Now we can add our dry ingredients, which includes three and three fourths of a cup of almond flour, a fourth a cup of tapioca flour, and then we're adding two and a fourth teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna whisk these together just until they're combined. And now I have this thick, gorgeous cake batter. This recipe will make one nine by 13 cake or three six inch round cakes, or you can do two eight inch round cakes like I am. And to make sure the cakes come out nice and easy, I like to line them with parchment paper. And you can cut the parchment paper to size or you can buy these pre-made ones like I have. And then I'm going to spray it generously with some nonstick. And then we'll do our best to evenly divide our cake batter between the two cake pans. And then I'll give the cakes a little shimmy to help spread out the batter and tap it a few times to get out any air bubbles. Now these are ready to go into a 350 degree oven for about 25 to 28 minutes or until the tops are starting to turn just a really light golden brown and a toothpick comes out clean. Now that our cakes are in the oven, we can make our orange cream cheese frosting. Now before I begin, I do like to sift my powdered cane sugar, and that's because it can often be a little bit clumpy in the package, and if I sift it first, it will be easier to mix without any clumps. So I've just poured two cups of powdered cane sugar into the strainer, and then I'm just going to tap it into a larger bowl. And you're going to see that all the fine powder will immediately fall through, and then it's going to leave these bigger clumps on top. And then I can easily mash those through with my spatula. And now in our mixing bowl, we want to add 12 ounces of cream cheese, which is one and a half blocks. And you'll want it to be room temperature so that it mixes together easily. And then we're gonna add a third a cup of room temperature butter and one tablespoon or the remainder of our orange zest and one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of lemon juice, just to enhance those citrus flavors. And then we'll add an eighth of a teaspoon of some orange extract. And you'll want to go easy on the extract because it's quite strong. And then we'll add two pinches of salt. Now this is optional, but I'm going to add a little bit of all natural food coloring just to enhance that orange color. And then we're going to mix this on high until it is smooth and creamy. Now that that's nice and smooth, we'll go ahead and add in our two cups of powdered cane sugar. And you can use regular powdered sugar also. And then I'll start mixing this on low until everything is well incorporated. Well, that looks beautiful. It is smooth and creamy, but also has those little specks of our orange zest. And now is a really good time to go in for a quality control pinky test. That is so good. Now, depending on your preference, you can add a little bit more of the orange extract if you'd like that orange flavor to be a little bit more pronounced. But for me, this is perfect. And now I'll just let this frosting hang out in my fridge until our cakes are baked, cooled, and ready to frost. To enhance the almond flavor in our cake and to add a really beautiful embellishment to the outside of it, we're gonna toast some sliced almonds. Now you could just put them on the cake raw, but I found that toasting them in a little bit of butter and salt adds some really delicious flavor and a slightly deeper color. So I'm just gonna bring my frying pan to a medium high heat and then drop in about a teaspoon of butter. And I'll just stir that around until it melts. And then we'll just dump in half a cup of sliced almonds and a few pinches of salt. And then we'll stir this around until all the almonds are coated in the butter. So it's been about a minute and I can tell that the ones on the bottom are starting to turn a slightly golden brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a stir. 
And then I'll keep stirring them for about another minute, just making sure that they don't over toast or become burnt. Well, those are perfect. So we can take them off the heat and then set them aside till we're ready to frost the cake. Well, here are our baked cakes that I allowed to cool on my counter. And then I took them out of the cake pans and put them into my refrigerator until they cooled completely. And now they are ready to frost. So I'll go ahead and take the parchment paper off the bottom and then I'll place it right in the center of our cake plate. And now we'll take our frosting that was in the fridge and give it a quick stir. And then we'll take a nice big plop and put it right on top of the cake. And using my frosting spatula, I'll go ahead and spread it around so it's in a nice even layer. Now that that's nice and even, I'm gonna go ahead and add our second cake layer. Let's place it right on top. And then we'll add frosting to the top of the cake, kind of towards the edge. And then I'll start to smooth it down onto the side of the cake. So you can decide if you want to have a very smooth finish or if you want more of a rustic look like I'm going for. Now that the sides are all frosted, I'm going to scoop out the rest of my frosting and put it right on top in the middle. And then I'll smooth it out on top. Now that all the frosting is on the cake, I'm going to go back around with my spatula and just make some really beautiful little swirl shapes while making sure that the frosting goes all the way to the bottom. I just think this looks really beautiful, organic, and appetizing. Now that our cake is beautifully frosted, we want to add our toasted almonds to the bottom half of the outside layer. So I'll just very gently tilt the cake, and I'll just gently start pressing the almonds right into the side. And then depending on how meticulous you are, you can go around and press even more of those little almonds up into the side, just until you have it exactly the way you like it. Now this looks beautiful and you can leave it as is, or I'm gonna show you how to make a really beautiful and simple orange flower embellishment that goes on top of the cake. To make the orange embellishment for the top of the cake, we're gonna start by peeling one of the oranges that we zested but didn't juice. So I'll just go through and quickly peel this orange and then very gently peel it into separate wedges. And then to minimize any excess moisture on top of the cake, I'm gonna put these onto a paper towel and then gently press out any excess moisture. And then you can decide if you want to have your orange flower on the top center of the cake or if you'd like to have it slightly off center. I'm gonna off center mine. So I'm gonna find center, go off to the side about an inch, poke my little pinky in it just to give myself a little center point, and then lay down my first orange wedge. And then I'll just continue to lay down the wedges in a circular pattern. And I think it works best to have an odd number, so I'm spacing them so that I can fit seven wedges. Oh, that is so pretty. <laughs> and then to give a little more depth, I'm gonna take a few of our little almond pieces and then just kind of drop them down in between the wedges. And yes, we are creating a piece of art out of our orange cake. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna use some mint leaves just to add another organic element, as well as some really beautiful contrasting color. And you get to decide how many that you'd like to use. And I find it works best to arrange them asymmetrical so they're not perfectly evenly spaced. Well, that is gorgeous. And it just started sprinkling outside, so I'm feeling very tropical right now. And I made myself a little cheater cake earlier so that I would have something to sample. That is delicious. <laughs> That orange flavor is so good. And I hope you can hear the sound of the rain because I'm just gonna keep recording. But seriously, as soon as you bite into that soft, spongy cake, you just get this sweet orange flavor that is so delicious. And I love the depth of flavor that's coming in from the almond flour and the little hint of the almond extract. And then that cream cheese frosting is so good. It's not overly sweet. It has just the right amount to be a delicious wrap around this delicious cake. And then getting a little extra crunch and taste from those toasted almonds just takes it to another level. Now, of course, this is a treat and will need to be eaten in moderation, but I love knowing that I'm eating something with clean, natural ingredients, which means I'm gonna feel just as good even after I eat it. And I love sharing my creatively healthy recipes so that you can enjoy them too. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my kitchen, and I've included a link to the full recipe, and it's in the video description below. And it's on my website, gentletummy.com. And I also invite you to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you know someone else who you think would love this recipe, please share this video with them. And I cannot wait to have you hang out with me again in my kitchen.